And inshallah, please don't forget this primary objective of blessing and continuously is to be conscious of God. To be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every act of Islam, every act of Islam is based on as a foundational uh, primitive manner is to create a sense of consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, and this is in Arabic is referred to as taqwa. Taqwa. And even this idea of taqwa, when I'm explaining this as an introduction so we understand our journey, inshallah. And you guys can make your notes and then I'll go through the post book like how we're going to be inshallah structuring. But just a very quick understanding. When you look at the word taqwa, we will just, the word is some of the meaning figure of taqwa. Ideal is about consciousness, but this fear, fear Allah, you know, and even the idea of fear, I mean, in a sense, almost it can be translated sometimes to some extent as uh, in phobia, more or less, where, you know, we, are we supposed to be scared of God, fear? That in a sense that what are we, how are we supposed to be, uh, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, questioning that idea? Now, when you look at the word fear in itself, it's something which, like, I mean, I can't say spiders, regardless of what it is, brush down to do, spiders, like, oh, I'm just not scared, I can't look at it sometimes. Why have got to deal with the spider in the house? And I'm fearful of a spider. But this is not the same kind of feeling we're supposed to have in regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do feel all inspired. And the idea of taqwa, it, it says so many connotations and meanings to it. The idea of khashiyah, the idea of being over-revered, being in the presence of God, which creates a sense of humility, that sense of fear is included in the idea of taqwa. But real taqwa, really what it is, comes from that waqa, yaqi. In a sense, it just means to be mindful and be conscious of Allah. Waqa'a yaqi actually means to abstain from something in the Arabic language. It actually means to stay away from something. Now, let me give this idea. Now, I've given this example before in a previous course. Say, you know, if you go, if you go to the jewelry shops, and that's we've got bigger, massive, massive streets of jewelry shops. Now, here, before you actually go into the shop, sometimes there's a bounce at the front. And there's going to be a double dose, somebody buzzes you and you get through. Now around you can see all the different types of jewels, gems, gold, everything around you. And you can see that it's behind the counter. But you don't see who's buzzed you in and you can't see anyone behind the counter. You can't see anyone. A thought slips into your mind, you know what, I can pocket a few jewels, no one's watching me. And all of a sudden you see CCTV cameras in all four corners. And no one will be crazy enough, even though no one is physically there at that time, no one would be crazy enough to slip a jewel into his pocket. Why? Because his actions are being recorded and will be used as evidence against that person in court. And he is conscious and mindful that somebody is watching him and as a result he abstained from indulging in such an action. Creating to the idea of taqwa. That you are so mindful of Allah, you are so conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the things he tells you not to engage in, you are mindful of, and the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has encouraged, you're also mindful of that too. That's what taqwa is. And the idea of taqwa can go into detail, but this is a very basic understanding of taqwa. To be God conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now your salah is supposed to be creating a sense of God consciousness. Our salah is not just a cardiovascular exercise. So that's some of the benefits of salah. In a sense, our salah is not like we previously said, up and down, touch the ground, turn around and back to town. And our mind is elsewhere. Whilst we're in salah, we're thinking, who can lose a deal probably? That's right. And all this kind of my kids were going crazy in school. I don't know why they watch like this kind of thing. Our, our mind is elsewhere, totally. Our mind is just lost. And the idea of, especially when it comes to actually engaging, focusing, concentrating, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi says in regards to prayer, this is a beautiful hadith. The Prophet says in the hadith, that you know, the Qurra Ta'ayni, like you know, in our slang, is like my chill out time. For me to actually enjoy myself, just to like, you know, relax. Now we may play some PlayStation, run the talk and that we should be playing that game, or watching movies or anything, right? To just to chill, whatever it may be. That means that kind of relaxing time. The message of Allah says, that sense of my peace, my time just to relax, is to actually engross myself in prayer. And we know this hadith now, we know the hadith, but we have to actually understand what they actually mean. When the Prophet actually will stand in prayer whilst his feet will become stolen, and we've heard that before. But to actually go through that, you know, sometimes you wait as in Tesco for a few minutes when there's a bit of a lag and you get impatient. And your aches and pains and all over the place. The Messenger of Allah was sang three, four, five, six hours, sometimes all night long in prayer. And he was so engrossed in his prayer that even since 
he, it would supersede the physical pain that he was experiencing because of this spiritual pleasure he was gaining from his prayer. 